right, hello everyone, hello and welcome. I'm just looking, this is my first time using this little back office here for Facebook Live, but um, I'm doing this so that I can hopefully see comments and who's watching. So just give me two seconds just so I can make sure. Hmm, it doesn't show me what's the what but we're gonna go for it anyway. Hey guys, hello my lovely entrepreneurs. Jasmine here with Fear No Video and fearnovideo.com. And today I am doing a live video that I actually did yesterday, um, but somehow it just went poof into the metaverse. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm taking that as a sign that um, those who needed to see this video, see this live, um, haven't seen it yet. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, today we are talking about why we do videos and a little bit of my origin story, like my backstory. And if you are ever planning to work with me, uh, for, those, for those of you who don't know, if you're new to this page, I, sh I help entrepreneurs who are struggling with camera anxiety just to get over what's you know stopping them from being more present with their business and being more visible. So I love, I love, love, love doing it. And this is why. So I'm taking you back, like way back to elementary school. And if you're ever going to work with me as a client, you should probably know I have been called dramatic since I even knew what the word meant. It is just in my DNA. It is who I am. But it's it's me. <laughs> it's me. I'm I am uh, fully baked at this point. So, taking you back to elementary school. I don't know if kids still do this today, but we would have to do book reports and stand in front of the class and read our book reports out loud to everyone. You usually had about 30 minutes. Sometimes the time got a little bit longer the older I got. I mean, I was doing this from elementary school all the way through, you know, parts of college, you know, presenting book reports and term papers and projects and all that sort of thing. And it was so nerve wracking for so many kids, even then. And you're looking at, you know, your, your classmates, right? The people that you spend all your time with. And again, I don't know how it is in elementary school today, but when I went to elementary school back in the 80s, early 80s, like 1981, um, 1980, you know, you spent all day with the same group of kids from first period until you got on the school bus to go home. And now kids can be cruel, so we all know that. I don't think that's ever going to change, sadly. But, you know, some kids were so incredibly nervous. And my thing was, if I'm gonna get up there and present this book report to you, you're gonna pay attention, okay? You're not going to fall asleep. You're not going to fidget. You're not going to do all the things that kids were doing. And I'm not going to lie. I was one of those kids who would fidget, fall asleep, and all those sorts of things because I was bored. And it wasn't any, like, it wasn't the fault of the other children. I think looking back, had I been born a few, like a decade later, I probably would have been diagnosed with, like, ADHD or ADD. Um, as most of my class probably would have been, but it was also a little uncomfortable to watch these other kids stand up in front of the class and they would have their, pretend this is a piece of paper, they'd have their paper and they would just kind of read and they would get nervous and they're shaking and all of that. So I used to act out my book reports and my term papers. I mean, sometimes it was interpretive dance. It was, it was wild. But I remember this one, this one report, it was, I want to say it was some sort of 
historical book report that I had to do or historical paper. So I, I got all my Barbies and my Cabbage Patch dolls and I, you know, took my brother's G.I. Joe's and his little green army men, had a tape recorder. I mean, I worked on this on this thing for days, right? And and I had sound effects and a music track and everything was timed out to the second so I could just hit play on the recorder and you know act out with the, with the dolls and then there'd be the, the sound effect that would come in and whether it was like crashing waves and thunder or whatever and there'd be a music bed and just a whole a whole production okay you give me 30 minutes to give you this this report I'm going to give you the best darn entertaining 30 minutes you've ever seen and this is from you know first grade on and part of it was again I think differently sometimes and I don't like to be bored and you can believe that none of the other students ever fell asleep during my book reports they all learned something and they remembered everything that they heard because it was visual it wasn't just you know someone standing there petrified to read a report and so all that to say it just kind of brings it back to why we do videos and that's because it shows our personality and it shows our customers who we are and it's it's a it's a visual disruption because you can really see what it is you're going to experience and you get a deeper connection that way. And you will probably remember something you've seen. You can probably recite movie quotes from a film you saw back when you were a kid um, versus something that you read in a notebook, <clears throat> excuse me, or something that you read um, in a magazine. So it's, it, our brains are really wired for visual learning. For many people, we're wired for visual learning. So video is just natural. And so I have seen a direct correlation between going on camera, whether it's live or on recorded or recorded and making more money, not just for myself, but other people as well. So <clears throat> let me just, uh, I'll take you back, not as far as elementary school, <laughs> but I'll take you back to um, just a couple of clients, right? So I, when I was just starting out as a wellness coach. I just graduated from IIN, which is the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, and they were great at teaching you all the nutrition, all of, you know, all of those things, but not so great at teaching you how to be in business. They gave you a little bit, but just not enough. And I have been a journalist for well over 30 years I started when I was when I was 15 years old so television and camera is really all that I've been doing um, so when I started with IIN it or after IIN when I graduated it was really natural for me to do cooking demos I love to cook at least I used to I don't I don't cook much now, but I love to cook and I loved experiencing new products, new foods. And a lot of foods were new to so many people that I was connecting with, like Faro. Faro, almost everyone knows what that is now, but you know, you look back, you know, 10 years ago or more, and not a ton of people knew about this ancient grain. Right, but I would show you how to use farro, and I would have wellness tips showing you how to make almond milk, how to make hummus, all these different things that changed my customers' lives and changed the lives of people who watched the videos. And so that was really great, 
because it just it got to show me and it also got to show you the viewer something new that you hadn't experienced before and something that you could kind of follow along with i also you know so then i had some some friends who were coaches and small business owners and they wanted to do videos as well so they'd come to me and they'd say jasmine show me the way what did you do how do you do it and that's kind of where fear no video was first born it was showing other coaches how to use video in their practices and to generate more leads get more clients and to help their existing clients just thrive and grow in their development so one coach in particular she wanted to do video she knew that she had to but she was petrified she didn't know what to wear she didn't know what to say she didn't know how to sit how to stand what to do with her hands like i talk with my hands a lot um so i apologize if it's if it's distracting to you um but it is who i am so it's what i do if i were on if i were doing a news broadcast i'd be a little bit more subdued but i'm not um so you know she came to me and once a week we we did lighting we did we did body positioning we did everything about scripting and sitting standing how to look at the camera how to how to how to dress that was really important for her because she wanted to be authoritative because of what she was doing but she also wanted to be approachable so we went through all of those different things to the point where she went from being like a stiff she, she was robotic when she first started and then she was just nice and comfortable loosey-goosey and all the knowledge that she had was just flowing out of her and coming on camera and she started doing periscopes that was one of her challenges was to do periscope and she was doing periscope every single day and she saw new leads coming in and new clients and more money and one of the speakers one of the guest speakers on the fear no video summit which is going on right now so if you don't have your free ticket it's not too late we're only um just barely in week number two and it's 21 days uh, fearnovideo.com is the link you grab your free ticket one of the speakers had the same exact thing she was petrified to go on camera but she knew that she had something so important to say and if she didn't say it someone's life would not be changed so she challenged herself to go and do a periscope every single day and within days of her live periscopes she started seeing more client or more lead gens and then more clients and she made thousands of extra dollars by being herself and giving her knowledge on periscope every single day so that's a direct correlation on camera more money okay another example is uh, when i was doing network marketing as part of my health coaching practice, I would do product demos. And every time I did a video, whether it was live or recorded on, you know, using, you know, making a, a cleaning product with essential oils or, you know, just different ways that you can cook with the oils, all those different things, the sale, of those particular oils went up dramatically when there was a new product launch I would do an unboxing and those products would get purchased off of the unboxing and I wasn't the only one it happened with so many of my cross line and once they started realizing that was happening again Jasmine show me the way how do I do this and you know even like today they're still doing their live videos and they're doing their recordings and it's just really great because so many folks were just so panicky when they started and you know who's really great at doing like the live demos and getting the sales 
um, you know, like the when Lululemon was a thing, or not Lululemon, um, what's it, LuLaRoe, when LuLaRoe was a thing, the LuLaRoe girls, they would, you know, show off all of their, their stuff, and then boom, 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 their leggings and their shirts would just fly off the shelves, right? And the same thing with like the paparazzi girls, you know, I see those paparazzi um, videos and they're getting dressed and they're doing, you know, they're showing you their jewelry of the day with their outfit of the day. And people love that stuff. It shows your personality, it shows your product, and then the product starts flying off the shelf. Even like when, when I was, um, you know, like I did a, a Facebook Live at an art show and I just before the show opened one morning, I just showed everything on the table. I sold more from people shopping my table through Facebook than I did the day of the show with me competing with hundreds of vendors. They weren't selling the same thing I was selling, but by the time people shoppers got to me, they were out of cash. So just out of money completely. Um, but I sold more by folks on Facebook and Instagram shopping my table live and throughout the day when they saw the, the replay than in person. So let that sink in for a second. Um, so, so, so there's just so many different examples and this can go for whatever your product program or service can be. If you, like I said, if you are a network marketer showing off your how to use your product, that's going to skyrocket your sales like nothing else because people need to see and they need to be connected and they need to, they, they need to, um, you know, just kind of be shown the way and it, you know, you, by you, you know, if you're a health coach and you're doing and you're doing a walk and talk through a grocery store, that's going to show your expertise and also show clients, well, maybe she can help me, maybe he can help me figure this out too. If you are a real estate agent doing a walk and talk through a house, I mean, that's going to show your personality to your customers, to your to potential buyers. And, you know, as you as you find, you know, fun little things in the house, you can, oh, look at this. This is, look at this amazing nook where you can put your books. You can, you know, put your child's painting. You can, you know, all these different things to really help the customer or the potential customer see themselves in that space. If you are selling books, you know, reading a book to children or having a kid read the book, if it's a kid's book or something like that, again, shows your personality, shows, you know, the power of the word that you're, that you're reading. They're just, every single industry can deal and, and be improved by using video. I have a friend who had a clothing store and when she had new merchandise come in, she would go through the store and show off the new products that were in. And then sure enough, folks would see her video, they'd come into the store and she would have more sales. So again, you can see that there is a direct correlation, again, a direct correlation between being on camera, being visible, and having more sales. So why me? Why would you want to work with me? So I mentioned that I've been a journalist for a very, very long time. With me, you're getting more than 30 years of experience behind the scenes and in front of the camera. I started off at 15 as an anchor for a teen or actually it was a kids news program called kid time news in philadelphia and it aired twice a day on a tv station there and it was so much fun it was um it was interesting especially as a teenager being in the spotlight and 
I'll be honest, there were times when it was uncomfortable. And part of it was, remember back, you know, elementary school story, kids can be cruel. So I was a chunky teenager and I wore glasses and my glasses were very, very, they're like, you know, thick. Um, so it was, it was a little, it was a little harsh sometimes because kids would talk, especially if you're at the mall or something, because everyone in the city watched this show every single day, twice a day. And kids knew my name and knew my face. So it, it was a little, sometimes it was a little, it was a little nerve wracking um, for me. Once the camera went on, I was completely nerve, uh, unnervous rather. And I, you know, I forgot about the negative comments and all of that. And what I know now as an adult is people are going to hear your message. So be you. The people who need to hear your message are going to hear your message regardless. So just be you. Don't be afraid to be you because you're wonderful. There's no one else like you. You're amazing. Just remember that. You, my friend, are amazing. So all that to say, I, so I've been on camera forever. Then once I graduated college and started working at a, at a TV station, I would help other, I would help guests be more comfortable, feel more comfortable on camera. So imagine this, okay? As nervous as you might feel when you are going to do a Facebook Live in your group, which is full of people who already have some sort of connection with you, even if it's not the strongest connection that you want. Imagine you are going on a live TV show. You're in a studio, massive studio, I keep hitting my microphone. You're in a massive studio with all of the lights above you and around you. You've, you have, you know, four or five cameras with camera people behind them, a floor director. You're sitting on the anchor desk with the hosts. So you have these people and you don't know where to look. You don't know what to do. And you are freaking out. But the reason the station was having you on the show is because you have something important to say. So you try to suck it up, but you're still like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? So what I would do, I would help calm them down and just kind of show them what it is that they're going to do, what they can expect and how to just kind of work through it and get out the brilliance that they're being brought on to the show to impart. And it worked every time. By the time they finished, they were like, but why was I so nervous? And I had some, like, uh, when we did, we started launching different types of shows. So we had radio hosts would come on and they're now trying to become TV hosts. And it might sound like it's a no brainer, but being on the radio where no one sees you is completely different than being in the studio live with all those aforementioned lights and people and then all the different sounds and all the activity and just everything that's going on. So I helped a lot of the radio hosts to become TV hosts. And some of them have, um, have, cable network shows today. Now, look, I'm not going to say they got their shows because of me, but I was there in the beginning helping them to hone their new craft. And it's exciting and I love it. And I've been doing that for so long. It is ingrained in me. The last time I ran a five-day challenge for entrepreneurs where people came in who were absolutely positively petrified of being on camera for their groups. Remember the groups that were, where people are already there because they have some sort of connection with them and their business. They were petrified to even record a video of themselves, not even on camera, just like their hands doing a product demo. 
by the time the five days were over, every single person was doing a live video. Every single person recorded videos for their groups. And let me tell you something, every single person is still doing that today. So the fear no video method can work for you and it can work for your business. And so this is why I do what I do because I love seeing the transformation. And this is why you want to be on camera because you want that transformation as well because you know that when you're visible, you make more money. So I really, I invite you to come to the Fear No Video Summit. It's going on right now. Again, it's 21 days. We're just getting started. We are, today's Tuesday, so we're at day five or six, I believe. We started on Friday, the 18th of August, and it's free. You'll get a lot of business advice and business tips from so many amazing people. We've already had someone to talk about how to get on television, how to tell your story, uh, how to manifest a, a, a good business and good energy to attract the people that you want. Today, we're talking with someone who's, who's showing you how to make a compelling offer that your customers actually want to buy. And later this week, we're, we're doing essential oils for anxiety. Actually, that was yesterday. Um, essential oils for anxiety, as well as branding, social media, how to do it effectively, and just so much more. Next week, so many more amazing speakers. We're talking about courses and, and you know, money mindset, just so many amazing, amazing speakers. I can't even, I just can't even. So hop on that. I am going to end this live with the last thought, which is, you know what? You're amazing, which I said earlier, and you have so much to offer. No matter what your product or service is, you have something that you want to share with the world and the world needs to see it. So. I will talk with you later. Have a great day. Bye.